Hey guys, this is Eric Young, and you're listening to Book in the Territory. Hey, this is Ring of Superstar Donovan Dijak, and you're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is a one man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is Booking the Territory, a pro wrestling podcast hosted by Mike Mills, Hard Body Harper from Wildcat Sports and Entertainment, and the mentally irregular Doc Turner. This podcast is a mix of your topics and thoughts in the world of pro wrestling, along with interviews and discussions with current independent stars and your favorite stars from the past. And now, here's your host, Mike Mills. Thank you, everyone, for checking out this week's episode of Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast on our YouTube channel. This week, I am going back in time to when we had on Vinny Marcellia. Now, when Vinny was on back in February of 2016, this was prior to him signing his ROH deal. This is prior to him, obviously, uh, doing battle with Jay Lethal as he had a world title match for the ROH world title before he was even signed, I believe. And, of course, it was before him, TKO Ryan, and Matt Taven won the six-man ROH World Tag Team Championship. So this is Vinny before all of that, and I realized, I don't know, uh, about a week ago, I did not have this episode up on YouTube. So if you're an ROH fan and you are liking what you're seeing these days from Vinny Marcellia in ROH, check this episode out. Check out all of our episodes online. We drop two podcast a week on podbean.com you can go to mikemills.podbean.com to find them we do a thursday show where we talk some classic wrestling and a little bit of current wrestling with roh tna sometimes a little wwe talk and we do a sunday show where it's all about smoky mountain wrestling from jim Cornette's promotion back in the 90s as for now thank you for checking out this week's youtube episode with Vinny marcelia again subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from this is the youtube version but there is an audio version and we'd appreciate it if you check it out and follow us on facebook while i'm thinking about it facebook.com slash booking the territory and we're on twitter at btt underscore podcast and we hope you subscribe and enjoy this week's episode on youtube thank you very much okay podcast fans i'm sitting here with and i'm not gonna butcher his name up Vinny marcelia is that right you Vinny? got it you got it you nailed it that's 100 percent correct I appreciate it, man. Uh, like I was telling y'all in the beginning of the show, Vinny is uh, Vinny's from a small town in Warwick, Rhode Island, trained by Spike Dudley, uh, Michael Bennett, Ryan Drew, and he's worked for Ring of Honor before from uh, as far back as 2012, Chikara, Dragon Gate, and any other reputable promotions on the East Coast. He has uh, He's known, and he's one of the best uh, from that area. So, oh, and before I forget, leader and representative of Ink Sanity. So, right. Vinny, I appreciate you coming on the show, doing the Book in the Territory podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, how's it going yeah, today? Yeah, thank you, man. I'm actually pretty pumped uh, to be on it. Uh, I, you know, follow you guys uh, on the Twitter and everything, and you guys post some interesting stuff all the time. So, you know, it's pretty cool, man. Pretty excited. Um, so yeah, just uh, yeah, I'm from the East Coast. Uh, tr- like you said, trained by Spike Dudley. Um, about going on to seven years now. Um, I was wrestling like before um, Spike actually discovered me. Um, I was just wrestling, uh, kind of self-trained, if you will. Um, you know, uh, I was always athletic. Um, I just didn't get the concept. You know what I mean? I would just kind of like get together. You know bunch of dudes in like a VFW hall who had a ring and just kind of wrestled. wasn't much of like a reputable place or, you know what I mean? Um, great people. Yeah. Um, just to move on, I wasn't in the right spot. Um, and then uh, Ryan uh, Drew, who I had mentioned, um, who was Spike Dudley's assistant trainer uh, at the time, who's now currently the head trainer at the Spike Dudley Academy, the lockup, uh, which is in Fall River, Massachusetts. Um, which also I actually came up with, uh, it was myself and Matt Taven who were the two uh, main students um, at the school at the time. Matt was a year ahead of me, and he was actually doing the same stuff I was at the VFW stuff and whatever before he was actually trained. So uh, Ryan had discovered Matt first, and Matt had gone off. I stayed, um, and it was nothing more than I was intimidated to move on and nobody likes to hear they're not doing well or 
you know, they're not good. You know, I was in that kind of zone. Um, all your friends are always going to tell you you're awesome, but you know, you yeah. want the, the guys, the, you got, you want the great wrestlers and the best around to think you're awesome that aren't your friends. Um, yeah. So, you know, you got to put the work in for that. So Matt had gone off. Um, he was, like I said, he's a year ahead of me in the uh, uh, correct training. Um, and then Ryan had been at one of those shows, uh, and he came to me and approached me and uh, would really, like, hammer it on me to tell me that, like, I'm not good, da-da-da, like, you, you have so much more potential than this. You know, you got to, you know, get trained correctly. You need proper training. And I would just kind of blow him off because he would do it in a sense where I'd be like intimidated by it. Like, am I going to go here and are people just going to rip me apart like this guy is right now? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know anything about like the depth of the wrestling business at this point. So I'm like, oh man. And then finally I kind of like, there was a Stephen Richards seminar. Finally I kind of just caved and I was just like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Cause you know, caving was ahead. And he was trying to get me to, you know, come, you know, come, come, it's good, it's good. You're going to, you know, it's a huge difference, like, you know. And then uh, I ended up going to the Stephen Richards seminar. It was awesome. Everybody was so cool. So I ended up going to uh, the Spike Dudley School for the first time. And it was me and my uh, my other friend, Matt, uh, who no longer uh, wrestled anymore. Um, we had a match in front of Spike. Spike just said, hey, guys, get in the ring show me what you can do. We did it. Uh, you know, all the moves and all the shit was there. Just no, uh, the psychology and, and everything else. Like we had no clue on what we were doing. You know what I mean? The yeah. storytelling and whatnot. That was the part that was missing. We could, you know, I mean, anybody can do moves, you know what I mean? But it's the, it's yeah. the drama. It's the emotion. It's, it's what's before and what's after, um, the move is one of truth martini's quotes, which I always, uh, have in my back pocket because it stood out to me when he had said that. Yeah. Um, so when we got in there, Spike when we were done, he just looked at us and he's like, kind of like with a smirk on his face. And he's just like, Hey, you guys don't know what you're doing. Um, which was, I was like, damn, that sucks. Cause I had already been wrestling, like wrestling quote unquote, um, for like a couple years prior to that. So like, and to me, I, I feel like I'm already wrestling. But I really wasn't. I was just kind of like going through the motions of what I've seen on television. You know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have my fundamentals down. You know what I mean? I didn't have any of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So then finally I was like, okay, so I stuck with it. And like we would train for like, man, like Tuesdays, Thursdays, and some Saturday mornings, like five to six hours at a time. And like like Spike and Ryan um, would just focus on us specifically. Now, granted, there was there was other students that were in the school. Um, but as far as like potential to progress and move on and keep going forward, uh, you know, that was myself, Matt Taven and, and like one other guy, um, that had the potential to move on. So he'd always, we, we, you know, he would focus on us three and that's why some Saturdays it would just be like Ryan, uh, me and Taven or, you know, Ryan Spike, me and Taven. And it would just get focused on the entire time, entire five to six hours of just training um, all the way from the basics to whatever. Um, so, you know, that's how that all started. And then, uh, you know, I was in a, I was in such a panic at first because it's like all this stuff, like I didn't realize how much more, you know, when I was new to wrestling that there actually is. Um, Cause you know, as a fan, you just watch it on TV and you're like, wow, that was cool. Da, da, da. But it's <laughs> such in-depth stuff. Um, so when I first started, I was like, holy smokes, I would talk to Ryan all the time. And I'd be like, you know, geez, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to do this. This is like kind of hard. Like, this is more, you know, I mean, I knew I wanted to do it, but I was just kind of like, I always needed that reassurance that I was going to be like, fine. You know what I mean? Like, everything's going to be cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Itself out. It'll click yeah. one day. And then uh, gradually I went through a couple phases. Like, uh, I, I always grew up, I, I love the Hardy Boys. Um when I was a kid growing up and I'm actually uh, pretty close to Matt Hardy now, um, which is pretty cool um, because growing up on him, I was a huge fan of both of them. And then years later, I ended up having a match with him in front of a sold out crowd. So that was a pretty cool like moment for me just as a wrestling fan. Uh, you know what I mean? A fan of wrestling. It was awesome. And he still supports me and helps me out to this day. 
but uh so when i first you know started progressing i kind of like okay you know my favorite wrestlers were the hardys or whatever so i went through this phase long hair da 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 this that flashy gear so i was like okay that's cool for where i am at 23 24 but i was like you know because i was just starting to be like okay new england like young up-and-comer you know because people are like okay he's trained by spike dudley now uh you know he's, he's starting to get like a good rep around the area um and then uh I, I kept going forward with that, forward with that. And then I, I changed that because I wore these, like, weird-looking <laughs> uh, arm sleeves that connected the back. Um, it looked like – it's funny. It looked like uh, – you've seen, the, like, Black Sheep with uh, um, David Spade and uh, Chris Farley yeah. when he puts on the little jacket. And he's like – like, that's what I felt like walking around in it. But, like, when I was younger – I, I didn't, you know what I mean? I was just trying things to see what would, what would be me. Like, what's me? Like, what is going to work for me? You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, yeah. at the time, it was like kids and stuff. They liked that. You know, they liked it. They thought it looked cool, whatever. Um, so at the time, I was like, okay, that's cool, whatever. But now, you know, that I'm older or whatever, I look back at it. I'm like, oh, well, why did I even do that? But it was just a phase that you go through from like the learning process. You know what I mean? You, everybody has like different character phases that they go through throughout their career until they really find who they are and they're true to themselves. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it's uh, natural. It, it's like exactly. A, it's it's, like it's kind of like natural. growing up. It's just an evolution process of it all. It's exactly. Like you, um, you're, it's like a baby we, crawling before they walk and, and run. and yeah. Exactly, and which has a lot to do with um, going through real-life situations outside of the ring. That can really help you uh, mature inside of the ring. You know, it, you know your changes on the outside – also affect the changes on the inside. Um, yeah. So, you know, I did that for a while. Then I went to uh, my first Ring of Honor camp, and I had that whole get-up. Um, and Delirious, who was there, and the head trainers, uh, I have all my tattoos, um, obviously. And he was like, why do you wear those sleeves? He's like, you have, like, beautiful ink. Why don't you show that off? You know what I mean? So then I kind of, like, put that into thought, and I ended up losing the sleeves. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get rid of these. Um, so I ran with that. I hair got really long. I kind of did like the um, alternative, like long beard, long, long hair, studded belt, tights, boom, uh, you know, that kind of grungy uh, look. Um, I did that for a while. Um, I got my first uh, TV. I got my very first TV opportunity, like I pay per view with Dragon Gate. Um, that brings me to Dragon Gate. Gabe um, had booked me in uh, Everett, Mass, uh, mm-hmm. at one of the ballroom buildings. But it was me and BJ Whitmer on I pay per view. Um, obviously, it was to get BJ over. Um, he was coming back to uh, the Dragon Gate scene, and I just went out there and just kind of beat my ass. He he gave me some stuff though, which is kind of cool. You know what I mean? He I love BJ Whitmer. He's awesome. He's an awesome person. Um, he's also awesome in the ring. So. Uh, it was really fun. I loved it. And it was new for me because it was my first kind of like, like major thing, you know what I mean? From the area. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that was really cool. And then, uh, the very next day was my ring of honor, um, tryout camp. And that was the one that Matt Taven had gotten signed from me and Matt Taven did that Dragon Gate show. And we drove to Philly right after from Boston. So Dragon Gate got over. It was like midnight, and we drove to Philly um, for the next for our first Ring of Honor camp, and we slept in the car because we got there. The camp started at like ten. We slept mm-hmm. in the car because we got there at like six in the morning, five in the morning. So we're exhausted. We're like miserable, <laughs> um, you know. So uh, we're yeah. sleeping in the car, and you know, the windows are foggy. The sun's coming up. It's the most uncomfortable shit you can ever imagine. And right, uh, right. So we go into the camp. Um, we kind of like not so much shit the bed on the first day of the camp because it's a two day camp, but we kind of like because of the drive and because of the night before, we kind of like uh, like you know what I mean, like didn't really like put a hundred percent that we could have. And the yeah. second day, um, we did really well because obviously we were able to like rest up at the hotel and do whatever. Um, and it, and that's the the camp that Matt Taven really like stole the show, and then he got a job with Ring of Honor. Um, I got an opportunity after that with Ring of Honor, uh, my first Ring of Honor television 
debut was against Rhino in a squash match. Uh, it was like 30 seconds. Um, well, Rhino was super cool. Uh, he, you know, he knew I had come from Spike School. Um, from you know when we talked about it, or whatever. So you know, I he was friends with Spike. So you know, he kind of had a feeling that okay, I, I kind of you're probably gonna be fine out there. So you know, this is what I'm gonna do. Da da da. And uh, boom, boom, boom. Thirty seconds. Uh, boom, gore. Uh, you know, I I sold my balls off for it. Uh, it's mm-hmm. actually a sick bump. I don't know if you ever seen it, but uh, they still use it actually with some ads, or they were before. Um, but that's pretty much that sell, uh, and that just, you know, got me some other opportunities. Everybody's super cool at Ring of Honor too. It's like one of the friendliest locker rooms I've ever been in, in wrestling. Um, I, um, it's funny you say that cause I will, let's see, I've had on Donovan Dijak on the show from Ring of Honor. I've had yep. on a uh, beer city bruiser from Ring of Honor. Yep. Um, as you, as you know, I've, I've had on Brian Fury. Right. Uh, I mean, we're we're talking uh, January 31st. His episode actually aired this week. Um, yeah. So, man, it's just um, it's uh, and, and Brian's in the top prospect tournament. But right. I, I enjoy talking to guys from Ring of Honor. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, all of them I've talked to so far are really really cool. And the other reason is, like I was telling Beer City Bruiser, it reminds me of a territory. Although I know it's not. It just reminds me of that old school look with the, you know. One hour TV a week, and I right, right. really enjoy that yeah, that aspect of it. And the the, yeah. the talent there is not over overexposed, and you know, and that's not a knock on Raw because I talk about that on my show all the time with the right, three right, hours. Right. But uh, and you know, you got one hour a week, and they don't have to roll the same guys out there every single every single week, and it's a it's a really really good product, and I enjoy talking to all the guys there. Uh, side note, um, I'm a big Matt Taven fan. I really like what he does out there. It's, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. good, man. Yeah. He's, he's great, up. man. And, like, you know, I can't wait for him to come back because he's going to, you know, he's he's one of my best friends, like, outside of wrestling. Um, so, you know, I, I he's, he's going to be great when he comes back from injury. He's doing really well and he's healing really fast. So, um, hey, you know, I, Matt I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can say this. I hate, I hate to cut you off. And when that injury happened, um, and you can you can you can say you're, you don't know. I'm just curious more than anything. Was that match cut short that you know of because of that? I don't know. I got that feeling that it was like because I saw when he got hurt and I was like, oh, that did. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Because um, there was only you know so and that was like uh, you know any, torn ACL. You're pretty much you know you know you're done for for a bit. Uh, so yeah, you yeah. have no choice at that point. You know, he he tried to uh, do what he could after it. Um, I saw that. I was like, "Whoa, yeah. um, God, which is pretty, you... yeah, which is pretty ballsy of him." So uh, yeah, but you know, there's only so much you can do. But uh, you know, health is the most important thing. So you know, absolutely, you know, take take it home. Um, and yeah. uh, but he he's gonna come back like uh, you know, hundred percent better than he was before. So you know, yeah. I'm 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 excited for him. You know, so. Uh, He's uh he's doing well though, uh, but yeah, uh, with, and then uh, Ring of Honor, I ended up doing after the Rhino thing, I ended up uh, wrestling in Providence, Rhode Island for a contract. It was actually um, again it involved Matt Taven, uh, myself, Antonio Thomas, and Q T Marshall, and that's when Q T Marshall won the contract uh, with Ring of Honor at the time. Um, that was a lot of fun because that was like my first like match with Ring of Honor, um, you know, because the Rhino thing he just pretty much killed me and that was the end of the story. Right, right. Um, so it was my first like match with them and it was like it was pretty cool, you know. And being from Providence, you know, obviously there's people there that knew I'll be from the area, um, so it was really cool to to be in there. And then like we did a cool little like you know for, with the people being out there. Uh, you know, did that go to the local province shows or Massachusetts shows or whatever it may be in the East Coast over here in the New England area, um, knew of me and Matt Haven. So, we, you know, there was a cool little moment where we did like kind of like a standoff, me and him. But people knew that we were friends and people knew that we trained and came up together. That was like the story that we were trying to get across at that moment. And it worked really well at the time. So it was really, really cool. And I have a picture still that I love of that. Um, so it was really cool. Um, and then, uh, so Kuchi Marshall won that. And then, um, I've done some other shots with like 
uh, me and Tommaso Champa in Pittsburgh for Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. That was really fun. That was a house show, uh, but the match was great. You know, we had more time being a house show. So, and Tommaso is actually one of my. Uh, I haven't wrestled him in a, in a while, but he was one of my favorite guys to wrestle at the time because uh, he kind of like brings, even if you're not as aggressive, um, he he brings it out of you. He makes you become more aggressive than what you really are, which I always kind of liked because it just makes you look better. Um, mm-hmm. So that was really cool. He was always uh, one of my favorites to wrestle with in the ring. Um, then... I went off to do the other stuff. Like we did a four corners, uh, a four, a four way in Providence with myself, um, Brian Fury, who you just mentioned, uh, uh, Hanson, Warbeard Hanson mm-hmm. and Congo. And, uh, Fury had won, won that and went to wrestle Matt Taven for the t- television title when Matt had it at the time. Um, uh, and then I wrestled, uh, Davey Richards, uh, and TV, uh, in Pittsburgh. And at the time there, I was like super nervous. Cause I mean, he's like the top dog there, you know what I mean? So I was kind of like, Oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, all right, yeah. here we go. Whatever. But he, like, he was great. He was like, I would love to wrestle him again and have like more time with it. We had like a seven minute match. Um, it was fun. You know what I mean? It was, I wish like I knew what I know now then, cause I could have made the match a lot better. Um, it was fine. It wasn't like, it was like a five star, but it was it was it was a match. You know what I mean? It was, a, it was there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a, it was a good match. Um, yeah. For where I was, you know what I mean. Um, and then, uh, you know, I then uh, I I did another like my last Ring of Honor show was like the Death Before Dishonor uh, in 2000. 13 or the tail end of 2013 because what happened was um i kind of got i kind of got lazy with wrestling um and it wasn't i hated wrestling or anything like that um because i always loved wrestling you can't once you're involved and that's it you're you know you're a wrestler you're hooked, um, you're hooked for life i mean it's, yeah uh, you are you're hooked you, for life it's crazy you're 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 tied to it whether you want to be it's uh whether you're just going to watch it on TV or whether you're going to sit on a yeah. podcast like me and talk about it, it's something yeah, yeah. you love and awesome. you're going to do it forever. You know, it's, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, um, it wants to see, I mean, I don't know if you know that. I, I worked the Indies in the, the mid to late 90s and early 2000s. And yeah, it's, a, it's always, it's always a part of your life. Even yeah. once you're long gone, you will, you will love and hate some aspects of it, but you will be involved in some way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? We're all fans of it. You know what I mean? Like no one, like yeah. who are you kidding? You know what I mean? I, I, you know, right. Everybody's like mark this, mark that. Yeah, I'm a huge mark. Like what are you like? It's, you know what I mean? Why do you think I got involved? You know, like right. come on, like it's, right. it's all. You know, it's, it's anybody who tries to betray like there's something like uh, you know, that's come on, like you know what I mean? We all love it. We we all love wrestling. We all have our favorite wrestlers. Like you know, that's why we get involved in this shit. You know? Yeah. So, uh, that's it. And then uh. So I did that, and, you know, Ring of Honor was kind of, like, telling me that they had ideas at the time. Uh, so I was kind of, like, getting anxious and excited. Um, probably a little too much than I should have. You know what I mean? Like, kind of, like, jumping the gun. Um, when yeah, they're just, yeah. like, you know, keep working, be patient, whatever. Um, and then I kind of was at a point where I was, like, okay, I'm 27 years old. I you know, have a fiance. I don't have a house. I want a, I want kids eventually. Um, my job's eh. So I was like, okay, so my boss and my job is like, all right, I'm going to have you be property manager, general manager of all these businesses and whatever. So I took the office and the money was great. Um, and then I bought a house. So at this time I was like, okay, I kind of dwindled down kind of disappeared from ring of honor, um, dropped my, you know, a lot of my contacts where I just stopped like trying or contacting people or whatever. And, uh, I ended up dwindling down on the indie scene and then I just took some time off. I took like pretty much a year off. Um, but what happened was I bought a house. I had my, my daughter, you know, I did all that stuff outside of wrestling because I knew eventually that it's gotta, it's gotta happen. It's gotta go down. You know, I got married. I did all that stuff. So, which was great though, um, because what happened was 
having my daughter and doing going through all this stuff really made me grow up outside of the wrestling business and now inside of the wrestling business. Um, uh, and I was able to reinvent myself, uh, find who I really was. You know, I think that was the biggest thing with me before I left is I didn't know, like, I knew what I liked, but I was trying to find, like, my, my niche, my thing. Like, what, you know what I mean? Like, what is, you know, and then I came back, uh, I got into, you know, when I was off, I looked like dog shit. I let my body go. I, I like wore glasses. I was like, okay, it was almost like a, all right, I'm going to put this goofy disguise on while I'm out of wrestling and look like a total doofus until I get <laughs> back to wrestling. <laughs> so it was yeah. like, you know what I mean? It was like one of those deals. And then uh, uh, I started like getting involved in the fitness scene again. And then slowly, gradually, I get my body on track, get my body on track. Then I came back changed altered my look a little bit and i was like well i'm gonna uh shit i was all these different things i'm like let me try like calling myself wrestling hybrid which sucks i thought it was the stupidest thing at first i was like okay let's see if this can grab anybody's attention it didn't it was the shit i thought it was like god awful after like i got these trunks too and they were like like multicolored gray and white trunks and it said like hybrid on the side and like my last name on the, on the, on the back, or just Vinnie Marcel, yeah, on the back. Yeah. And yeah. like, like for that, I was like, Oh, these are kind of cool. But then I was like, those suck. There's like no thought into them. Like, they're just like, like, what does that even mean? Like if someone asked me, what is wrestling hybrid? I don't even know what the hell to tell them. To be honest right, with right. you. <laughs> um, so I did that. And then, uh, I just kept, I, I did a couple shows as that. I was trying to put it out there, but there was, wasn't getting much response, you know, because it was, I, I was trying to force something on myself that wasn't really me. You know, I was trying to force this, this thing, this character, this, this, whatever I was trying to do. Um, so then like, I, I, you know, I was kind of like, I wasn't panicked or anything. I was kind of like, just whatever, kept working, doing my thing. And then like one night I was like sitting on the couch and I was like, okay, let me just think for a second. Like, all right, I'm covered in tattoos. Um, uh, I'm crazy. <laughs> Everybody has to be kind of crazy to be involved in wrestling. What mm. can... Okay, I was like, yeah. I was like, and then that's when I came up with the Ink Sanity. I was like, that is it. That is what I'm going to do. That is what I'm going to run with because that is who I am. That is not forced. It's 100% me. You can look at that label and look at me and be like, okay. Uh, like, I get it. You know what I mean? I don't have to even... I don't even have to sit there and say, okay. This is what it means. Blah, blah, blah. You can see ink sanity, and you can put my picture next to that word. It's just be like, okay. Like, right. I, like, it, I get it. it. You, I, you I, see the correlation, and the story is already yeah. told for it. Yeah. Like, okay, I get it. There it is. You know what I mean? And then, like, what I portray in the ring, like, it matches still with that. So, like, I, like you know, I'm onto something here. You know what I mean? So, it kind of, it's it's really actually starting to grab a lot of people's attention. Um, <clears throat> between the merch, there's you know, there's people hooking me up with really good t-shirt designs and stuff like that. Um, it's just flowing really nice. Like, and it's like, and you know when it does, because like, you don't have that like weird feeling of like, like in confidence. You know what I mean? I'm a hundred percent confident in that, uh, what I came up with and who I am now, you know, it took a right. while. Yes. And it takes people years and years. Like I said, people go through like the craziest things, different characters, but it takes you years to find out who you really are in professional wrestling. You just got to be yourself. You know what I mean? Just be yourself. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be Vinny. I'm Vinny. I'm covered in tattoos. This is what I'm going to do. This is what it is. It matches. It's not forced. And that's, you know, that's it. So now I'm more confident and comfortable more than I ever have been in wrestling. Um, and this year it's actually picking up really well. Um, I'm doing, uh, Back to the other, like, you know, I told you Dragon Gate was my first um, initial uh, iPay-per-view TV spot. Chikara, yeah. I did a one-shot deal with them. It was the Young Lions Cup in 2012. Um, and it was a lot of fun, uh, but it was still at that point where I was, like, kind of new and, like, training at spikes and kind of, like, getting the my groove going of, like, you know, my learning, and uh, which I still learn to this day. It never stops. Um, yeah. Uh, 
so like you know Chikar is very like character driven so like I'm like okay I, you know I'm going in there I have my long hair I have like the tights and whatever so all of a sudden I'm like I come out as this artist <laughs> so I like I like pick my hair because my hair is long but it's curly so like my hair like, can be like looking like an afro if you look up on YouTube <laughs> you can see the match actually it was like okay. me uh, uh, me ACH JT Dunn and uh, I think it was like Aaron Epic at the time and uh, I come out and I'm like with a paintbrush and this artist thing, but like I'm like what? Like I felt like I had to be a character because everybody on the show was almost a character. So I'm like ah, but you know what I mean. And I didn't know to just be me at the time because I didn't know what I wanted to be. So I'm like ah, let's see if this you know gets me over. And uh, you know I was already like semi over because people knew me from the area, but like I was just I felt stupid. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah, I, hear you. I didn't want to do that, but I was like, you know, wait a minute, Chicago, do I have to be a character right now? Like, uh, you like, can I just do my own thing? Or, well, I'm just going to be this, like, you know what I mean? Like, I came out with a paintbrush. It was like the shit, but it was cool to do the show. Um, it was really fun. Uh, I was freaked out at first, though, because call time was like 12, and uh, I didn't know that because Quackenbush had not sent me an email saying that call time was 12. He sent me the email that was the, the booking confirmation, but he never sent me, like, the call time. So I'm getting calls, texts, blah, 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 and I had a long night before, the night before that. <laughs> so I get a call, and I answer, and uh, I think it was Joey Eastman. He's like, hey, we're all call, call time was 12. Uh, I'm in bed, man. <laughs> like, uh, this is in Boston. He's like, oh, you're supposed to be here at 12. They did, like, a speech went over the show. I was like, and it's my first car thing. So I'm like, shit. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, you're like, damn, this isn't a good look. Yeah, like, talk about anxiety through the roof. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I do, yeah. the, I do the ultimate, like, holy shit, I'm late for work. Throw the blanket off me. Jump up. Get on. You know what I mean? Like, holy, like, <laughs> this is, this sucks. <laughs> and I'm speeding the Boston. Um, I get there, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of like, I can just feel it. You know what I mean? There's the eyes because I'm like just randomly showing up now. And I'm like, right. oh. And then uh, Delirious is there. And he uh, he kind of like, you know, vowed for me because he knew me already from the Ring of Honor stuff to try out. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That. So he's like, nah, then he's a good dude. He, he wouldn't do that. And, but Quack ended up coming up front and being like, I didn't even send you this all time, so that's my fault. So no worries, whatever. So like, it kind of it, like worked itself out, but you know, imagine me, the feeling I had, like, like getting up and going there. And just being yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, shit, I got to find parking. And I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, maybe I should just buy a ticket and just watch the show. Forget it. You know, like, <laughs> right. but, uh, but it was a fun time. You know, it was a fun little thing. It was different for me. So that's what made it fun. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll always remember it because it was just fun, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And then, uh, so this year has been awesome so far. Um, I just, I worked for Keystone Pro Wrestling, uh, me versus Trevor Lee, which is great. Um, I have me versus Ethan Page coming up at Keystone. Um, last night was the Northeast Wrestling Show in Bethany, Connecticut, which was sold out crowd. Uh, and there was like a big uh, rumble thing and it came out like me and, uh, it, me, and Sal, uh, me and Sammy Callahan kind of like paired up together and kind of like did some beat downs in the, in the rumble, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, man, this year is doing really like going really well. Um, there's some good opportunities coming up that I hope uh, going into, going to the direction that I have a feeling they will. Um, yeah. So I'm just you know fingers across and hoping that it does go that way. So I'll just have to wait and see. Um, That's good. That's good because you how, how long how many years now? I mean, in, in, all in total, have you been have you been doing it? All in total, uh, you think, well, let's, hmm, all in total, probably, I would say, like, 10 years. Professionally yeah. trained, going on seven. So yeah. like, no, no, you know, no. So, but, as I said, you, you put your, you put your, your, your time and. Right, you, you, right. You've been around and, right. and, and, uh, and yeah, and no, so that, that's with, why I asked that. Yeah, and the biggest thing with me, with wrestling, like, I mean, if you just, just be a good person to people. You know what I mean? Like, that's all. You, you just be a good person. Like, there's no there's no need to be, uh, you know, a dickhead or anything like that. Just If you're just good to people, man, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. You know what I mean? Like, 
and like some people like kind of get carried away and it's just like hold on a sec i'm 30 years old hey. with a family and a house and a home and a you know like don't don't talk to me like you know what i mean like yeah yeah, yeah i know exactly you know? what you mean uh, I, I know mean, exactly. everybody I, yeah everybody i come across uh, with in wrestling hey how are you nice to meet you i'm Vinny. you know what's your name blah 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 like you know we all love wrestling right like what's the what's the you know so it's, yeah you it's know. A, and it's amazing too if you if you treat people that way how it will be reciprocated generally i mean right um but uh the wrestling business is uh, at least back in the day it definitely you know some people weren't always like that but yeah it's right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's 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 crazy how if you just treat people good it's uh yeah yeah you know, yeah and you can you know what i mean it goes back. along it goes a long way you know what i mean it really does yep just being a good exactly person you, you know and like yeah uh um I I don't even and like the whole like you know I respect everybody in wrestling because this stuff is man it's a struggle anybody who does this I have a hundred percent respect for and I hope they get uh, fully out of what they're trying to do I really truly mean that because uh, I've I've had the shitty jobs I've had the no jobs I had you know what I mean just to try to get something out of this um, so anybody who's who's doing it at all whatever level you are. Um, I, I have hundred hundred percent respect for anybody um, that does it because it's uh, you know it's uh, it's a pain in the ass you know what I mean to really <laughs> hard work to make a it's, a, it's a it's hard work it's a long road it's the odds are because of there being no territory system like there was when I was growing up right. there's there's it's it's a uh, it's a lot better right now than it was ten years ago because of you know how how much ROH has grown and you right. know TNA is still around and and you know, I, I get I get heat on my show. I, I use the term heat, but I get black backlash from some fans on our show because I try to I'm I try to be very supportive of a lot of the organizations, and, and TNA has caught its share of uh, backlash, should right. I say, over the yeah. last but couple years. But I, 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 man. yeah, I want to I want them to succeed, man, because like okay, if there's no TNA, that's um, and I'm making a number up because I don't know how many guys they technically right. have under contract, but that's that's 30 to 40 more guys who don't have full-time jobs. You know, if TNA exactly. is not around. Exactly. So, like, like, when I saw, like, I was actually, when I saw Mike Bennett, I didn't even know. I don't read, like, the dirt sheets and all that. I had no clue he was going to TNA. So when he when he went to TNA, I was like, all right, that's some, that, that's good. I'm I'm shocked he didn't show up somewhere else. But, um, you know, it, I just, I'm glad that they are, and I've been, I've been a fan of theirs the last couple of years. I'm, I'm glad that they're, they seem to be turning a corner, but I want to oh, see yeah. like emotions. And I, I, I make all this to say, I say all that to say like, you know, you're talking about it's hard to make it in wrestling. Yeah, man. It's so like when you have companies like ROH and TNA and all, even the smaller companies, I mean, it gives guys a place to a work. Place to and, a place to be. Whereas right. 10 years ago, there wasn't as much of an opportunity. You know, all you had was WWE once everyone was pretty much shut down. I mean, TNA was around, ROH was around, but ROH wasn't, it wasn't what they are now because I, I've seen oh, ROH. Right. Me, they've taken big steps over the last uh, couple of years. Oh yeah. And like the thing with like, and like the thing with TNA too, is like with, with Mike, Mike Bennett and Maria, like that's like, they're doing so well over there. Uh, and it's a good thing for TNA. Like, it's starting to get, like, a little, like, uh, some steam, you know what I mean? The whole, like, uh, miracle thing. And I love it. Um, it's totally Mike, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like and another person, like, I'm very close to, to Mike and Maria as well. It's, you know, I've always, I've traveled with them, the Ring of Honor, plenty of times. Like I said, Michael Bennett had, uh, had, has had part in my training. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he, he would pop in. Um, he wasn't, like, a full-on, like, spike and Ryan trainer for me, but he would come down. <clears throat> he would he would come to the school because he he would train he would train with us. You know what I mean? He'd, he'd mm -hmm. be in the ring with us training. So like yeah, he had a he had a hand in in assisting my training. Um, and then you know just working him numerous 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 times on like my in through my area. Um, and I'm very close to them. So uh, like yeah, I, I think it's a great thing what they're doing with Mike and Maria and. Uh, I don't know. Like people can say whatever they want about any of these companies, but like if the offer's there, like you know what I mean. Like I don't know. I think majority of the people would take it. Like no, I, I sure would have. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, as, it, it as don't... far as like if you're an indie wrestler and someone proposes an offer to you, uh, you know what I mean. Are you just gonna, you know what I mean. Like I, I don't know. I would take it. You know, like 
Yeah. You know, so I, I'm supportive of of all wrestling. You know, it, it's, it's it's ice cream, man. It's all different flavors, and uh, you know, all ice cream tastes good to me. So, uh, you know, so it's it's true. I, it's um, I was talking to um to AJ Kirsch um who was on Tough Enough and he's actually the uh, announcer for Hood Slam out in California and yep. he he actually he actually said it real good to me when we were talking it's like wrestling so you got TNA you got ROH you got WWE it's like it's like different genres of movies um you know yeah, like yeah. um and I don't want to get into the horror movie thing. And the only reason I don't want to is because, Vinny, I know that's you. I don't yeah, watch yeah, horror yeah, movies man. at all. So, like, I wouldn't have anything to really add to it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, his, but his point was it's like, you know, some people like horror movies and some people like comedies and some people like dramas. And he's like, wrestling's the same way. Like, maybe WWE exactly. is the type of wrestling you want to watch. And maybe ROH is the type. And maybe, you know, exactly. Hoods is what you want to watch. And maybe um, – you know, all the TNA is what you want to watch. So it's like different, like you said, different flavors of ice cream. We don't all have to like the same flavor. It's, right. uh, but it's, but it's payment to us and it gives us a variety. So I, I agree. Right. That's, it's exactly, and, and wrestling, it's exactly what it is. And, and wrestling, it brings, you know, you just mentioned the movie uh, thing, the category, how you did it, and which is great uh, because it brings you to like wrestling in general is a movie. Uh, it's not like people get drawn into the emotion of what's going on in the ring. You know what I mean? Uh, like the facials, the body language. That is what people connect to in professional wrestling. Uh, in, in my opinion, and I think plenty of other people's opinion, because I've heard it through some of the best wrestlers in the world, um, that very line. So, uh, yeah, and that's like, that's the thing that a lot of, um, I think some guys don't like, they kind of like forget about sometimes. Um, uh, on the indie scene, anyway, um, that that like even when I was wrestling Trevor Lee, like uh, there's a lot of like just emotion and body language and facial and aggression and you know when I was mad, when I was sad, when he was mad, when he was uh, frustrated. You know what I mean? Like that's what people connect to. People see that. Mm-hmm. People see. Okay, he's mad right now. He's pretty pissed off. Wait, okay, he's happy. You know what I mean? Like. It's, to me, it's all like emotion, and that's like what it's just like watching a movie. When you watch a movie and you get so invested into the movie, it's because of the, the emotion, the drama, you know, what's yeah. going on in that movie. And that's what right. a wrestling match is. A wrestling match is a movie structure. Um, so yep. like that's that's the cool part about it. It's an art. Wrestling is an art, and it's and it's pretty awesome, you know. And uh, I love it. And I'm gonna keep doing it until I. Uh, I can't. Um, yeah, but, I don't. You know, I don't blame you. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, it's addicting. It's like uh, it's just like tattoos. It, it it absolutely is. Um, but oh man. Um, hey, how'd you uh, how'd you how'd you find the? I'm just curious. Uh, how'd you find the 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 podcast, the uh, our show? Um, um I, actually, I had seen it because I follow like uh, well, Brian Fury is actually on, on my Twitter too, and I. Oh, okay, I, okay. I, yeah, and I kind of like I think I caught wind of it on there, and I just like went through a bunch of the other stuff too. Um, okay. And, and took a liking to it, but yeah, Brian Fury is great too. I I, I worked with Brian Fury not too long ago, maybe like a month ago, and we had a really uh, it was a fun match, fun little crowd. Um, but yeah, I wish him the best too. You know, he's he's doing well, and I, I hope uh, he keeps moving forward because he's uh he's really been like chipping away the, the past few years. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it, actually, we've gone together to some of these camps. Um, so he he's really working hard for himself. So I do wish him the best on whatever he uh you know decide what direction he goes in. That dude that dude's so down to earth, man. I told him I told him win or lose this top prospect tournament. I told him I wanted him to come back on the show because you know yeah. we were talking and you know you run short on time. I'm like I'm like I don't care if you win, I don't care if you lose, you can come back. So whatever happens with the tournament, I wish him the best. But he's gonna I'm gonna bring him back on the show. Yeah, absolutely, great guy. Yeah, yeah, very down to earth, man. He's just uh, yeah. I, I've told I told him and I told Beer City Bruiser, whenever guys like them uh, keep at it as long as they do, because as you said, it's hard. It, you know, it you get to a point where it's like, it man, I'm really not making a name. It maybe it's me, and then you just start to go, you know, life. There's so much else in life, yep. and yep. And and all those things. I mean, look. Hey, I'm guilty. I'm not. I'm not guilty of it. But like that was me. Like I 
I was like, well, okay, I'm not going to war with this, and I got a great job. So guess yep. what? The great job wins out, and exactly. I'm going to – <laughs> gonna stick with that rather than and it gets even you know, harder because you have a family you know what i mean like once you right. have a family it's like okay i got my daughter now and my wife i i gotta be careful and i gotta like really you know if i'm gonna do this uh, i gotta do it you know what i mean like i gotta do it so that's right like, that's my right. thing like you know i just have a i have you know i'm trying to i have a positive attitude now I'm like you know i'm just I just, I want to be, you know, just, just a good person and just keep working hard. That's it. Keep learning, keep working hard and just do my thing. That's it, man. That's all, that's all I want to do, you know? Yep. I'm, I, I agree. I agree, Vinny. Uh, hey, go ahead and, and plug all your social media stuff and tell the people where to find you that we're, since we're almost time and wrapping things up. Yeah. And I, I want to make sure they know exactly where to find you and where to find anything about you that they need to find on social media. Right on. So, my Twitter handle is Vinny, V-I-N-N-Y, underscore Marcelia, which is N-A-R-S-E-G-L-I-A. And the same goes for uh, Instagram and uh, the Facebook. Um, and you can get any merch on any of that. You can do Vinny Marcelia at gmail.com. Um, and uh, Erica will respond to you with my wife, and she will hook you up with all the Insanity merch if you're interested. Um, and that's pretty much it. I got a lot of cool stuff going on this year. So if anybody takes interest, um, you'll definitely be popping up on all my social media. Some great matches coming up, and I'll be posting some great matches as well. All right, man. Well, that sounds good. Vinny, I appreciate you coming on. We'll do it again sometime. Don't, Absolutely. Uh, You're don't awesome, think... man. Thank you for having me. Seriously. Oh, no, with, uh, no problem. No problem. It won't, cool be, talk, it won't man. be the last one. We'll 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 bring you back another time. I, I'm actually thinking like in advance because I know I know when you're on my uh, I say my buddy Felix. We've only met over the phone because you know we're we're both podcasts right, yeah. and stuff. And uh, I know uh, he told me um, he I remember him saying because I asked him I was like hey didn't you have Vinny on? This is after you and I were talking. He goes yeah yeah right. I had him on. He said I had him on uh, right before Halloween. He's like he's a big horror buff. And, yeah. Uh, so yeah, who knows? Man. Maybe I'll bring you on. Uh, maybe I'll bring you on before uh, Halloween uh, this year. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, man. Absolutely. Please keep in touch. Seriously, you're a great guy. Thank you so much. Thanks again, everyone, for checking out this week's YouTube episode. Like I said, please go check us out on our audio-only podcast. I got the links in the notes below, and it'll take you wherever you need to go, whether it's our social media or iTunes or Podbean or all that good stuff, Stitcher, how you can subscribe to our show. We'd appreciate it. And thank you very much, man. We appreciate you checking out this week's episode with Vinny Marcellia, a throwback episode from February of 2016 that I'm finally just getting around to putting it together because I just realized it wasn't online. So thanks again. This is Mike, and I hope to catch you on our audio versions of our podcast on Thursday and Sundays. We appreciate it.